I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. After Dark Club. Gentlemen, I give you Katrina. Where the star attraction is a 2,000 year old vampire. Ah! Grace Jones, Fab, a frightening comedy. Look, no thanks. Ring it up. Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. This is another request from Brock. Thank you so much. If anyone's ever interested in requesting pretty much any type of video, you either do so directly via my PayPal or by joining my Patreon. Uh, the links are down below in the info box. If not, no worries. But if so, thank you. But the review for today is for Vamp from 1986. Now, this is a film I've seen a few times. And it's actually for free on 2B TV. And watch it again. I didn't mind it for what it was. I didn't love the film. It would not be one of my favorite vampire films. There's enough I liked about it that I would give it a thumbs up, not a thumbs down. But I do have some issues with it. Now, I don't mind the cast. You had Chris Matepeace, who was the star, along with Bill Murray in Meatballs. He was the little kid. Who Bill Murray was helping out in Meatballs. You also have Robert Russler, who is Grady, the lead character's friend in Number Knows Part 2. He was also in another film I reviewed so called Sometimes They Come Back. You also have Getty Wantanabe, who is Lunduck Dawn in 16 Candles. You have Grace Jones from Conan the Destroyer as our head vampire here. I would say okay, the the plot of the film is these two guys, Chris, May, Chris Maypiece and Robert Russler, they're going off and they're going to end this fraternity pledge, which you know, the way it opened was fairly entertaining because you, it's super serious and you think they're going to be hun, but then the tape that's doing the ceremony fucks up and Robert Russ like, this is just stupid, guys. And, you know, takes it off. Like, come on. Like, what are you guys doing here? You know, if you guys were smart, we're disappointing you. If you guys were smart, you'd have us do something that would better serve, serve you and would help you out. So I, I like the way it began. I thought Chris Maypiece and Robert Russler worked fairly well together. And... Then they get the job of trying to find a stripper for this fraternity they want to join their party. And they don't know where to how to get there. They don't have any vehicles. So they get this rich kid, Giddy Watanabe, who's just desperate for a friend. And the three of them go off to the city to find a stripper. Now, let me stop a little bit. I think if the movie was strictly about these three people, their interactions with each other, and how the three of them have to deal with this craziness and bounce back and forth, I think that would have made the movie better. But then the other two kind of get taken away fairly quickly. And then just because Chris Maypiece and this girl, and I didn't mind the girl, I thought she did fine acting wise that she knows him, but then he doesn't remember her. 
it just I will say though it still made the film a bit less interesting after that but I mean there's still some good parts even later on but before I get into that so the three of them go to this club and you have Grace Jones as Katrina now I'm sorry this is probably the unsexiest stripper I have ever seen if Ronald McDonald had an evil sister, this is what Chris, as this performance will look like. Because it's Grace Jones, but she's in white face and orange hair. And I'm looking at this and I'm going, but other people are like, I'm like, you look better without the white makeup. Grace Jones, you look better without the fucking wig. It's looking like you fucking Ronald McDonald's mother. Or motherfucker. I mean, so, like, this is supposed to be a sexy stripper that people are like, why? Why are people. Why? Before that, I should mention that. They did a little bit in a fight with some guys, including Billy Drago. And then they go into this club with Grace Jones. And then after that, Grace Jones takes Robert Russell to the back. He gets bit. And then he's gone for a good chunk of the movie. And I thought that was a mistake because I think one of the strongest parts of the film was this friendship between Chris Maypiece and Robert Russler. So when Robert Russler gets bit and he's kind of thrown to the side for a chunk of the movie thinking he's dead, that really hurts it a lot. Because it's like a buddy movie and now you're taking away the buddy. And it just, to me, it, it doesn't have... It's missing something. It, and maybe because they kind of complemented with each other and they made the other more interesting. And I'm sorry, but Chris Maypiece, he's okay, but he's not as interesting by himself. He's more interesting when he's playing off someone, whether it be Bill Murray and Meatballs or when he's playing off Robert Russell in this movie. And then Danny Watanabe, he's just over there fucking around and appears once in a blue moon. But you'd have Danny Watanabe be a bit serious maybe or have him grow a little bit as an actor as well as be funny and not just do Lunduck Dong and stuff. Which he doesn't do a lot of that in this, but I'm just saying you could do a bit more with that. But then again, they kind of, he just left at the club and once in a while he acts a little bit drunk. That's it. So I thought it was a waste of him. And then, you know, some scenes happen. There's a part where he almost gets cut in half by an elevator, but I don't know. It just, that scene was kind of, I didn't feel it had a lot of tension to it. I didn't feel how a lot of, it wasn't like someone was attacking him or dragging him and he had to hit the, no, it was just, oh, I almost got it. Okay, now he's gone. It's like, eh. Now, to give credit where credit's due, when the vampires do show up, the makeup's not that bad. Pretty, fairly decent makeup. The lighting. I thought it was pretty decent. Definitely made some of the scenes look a bit more vibrant. There are scenes where the alleyways have purple or green hues of light to them. and made it, again, a little bit more of a unique, a unique look to the movie. I'm like, in a minute now, I'm like, are we in the world of Dick Tracy or something? But no. But by this point, it just I've lost a bit of interest. Okay, he's Robert, Chris Maypiece almost just cut and have an elevator. Just wasn't that exciting or tense filled of a scene. He's chased by Billy Drago and his crew. They go through some sewers. And he finds Robert Russell, his friend, in the garbage. He freaks out, of course, because his friend's dead. He goes back to the club to get Daddy Watanabe. And lo and behold, Robert Russell's there. It's like, okay, cool. Robert Russell's back. 
Of course, we know he's a vampire. You can put two and two together. There's some decent effects. The stripper vampire that attacks him and he kills by putting the heel of a shoe right into the chest of the vampire. So the again, the look of the vampire's face is pretty decent effects. I didn't mind the scene with Robert Rustler and Chris Maypiece when Rustler's a vampire and he's going to attack him. But he's like, come on, man. Just take me out, man. Well, I can't, I can't do it. You really would die for me, would you? And then he impales himself. Yeah, that was a good scene. But then once again, Robert Rustler is out of the movie again for a good chunk of it. And it, you see what I'm saying? Like, why didn't you just keep it this buddy movie? Because they weren't... When the scenes of the two of them... Those, to me, are the best scenes, in my opinion. But it's like they keep fucking taking Robert Russell out. Okay, if you want to make him a vampire, make him a vampire, have him disappear a little bit, and then the rest of the film be like this buddy movie where one's a vampire and one's not. And have them still have back and forth. You create some maybe interesting dialogue, because one's a vampire, one's not. And then two of them are running away or battling them or whatever. But no. So then he disappears for a good chunk of the movie as well. Until like the very end of the film. No, he gets... Chris Maypiece gets with the, the girl. They burn down the bar. They get they want a knobby. They find out, oh shit, now he's a vampire. So they get out and the car blows up. It was cool that Chris Maypiece... Again, there's some still fun stuff. How they burned down the bar. I thought that was shot well. Of how they burned down the bar. Using actual fire. This is 1986. So you don't have fucking stupid CGI again in the way. They do establish that Chris Maypiece is drew with an arrow. Bow and arrow earlier in the film. So it's nice they bring that back. I wish he had killed a more vampires with it but he does kill a cup a handful with it well really one now that I think about it he only killed one so I wish he would have killed more with that but in this I mean he has some all right stuff he shoots again he shoots one in the chest with a bow and arrow he burns some vampires in this crypt in the sewer part there's grace jones he shoots her right in the mouth i thought that was really cool one bit of humor which was kind of quirky was even when grace jones is burned to a skeleton the skeleton almost gets up and then gives him the middle finger that made me chuckle a little bit. And then this other vampire who's with Grace Jones is going to attack them. But then he gets stabbed in the back by Robert Rustler. And Robert Rustler's alive because he used the wrong fucking thing. And... I don't know, I just... I thought the director could have brought a lot more energy into this film either with pacing or camera work or something. I thought Robert Russell being taken away for huge chunks of time really hurt it because I think it worked better with the two of them together. And I think if you stuck the two of them together for a huge chunk of the film, it would have been a lot better. I mean, Chris Makepeace wasn't bad. Robert Russell I liked as an actor. I think they worked well together. I just thought... Chris Maypiece and the girl. The girl did fine, but they just were not as interesting compared to Chris and Robert Russell. It's not a tremendously gory film. I mean, you get a little bit of stuff, like Grace Jones rips one one's heart out. But yeah, it's not a terribly bloody, gory film. It's not as much of an effects film compared to, say, Fright Night where you had 
when Ryan McDowell stabbed the guy and he melted and or the big fucking vampire bat of Jerry Dandridge and so it's not as big of an effect showcase other than a little bit of the faces and stuff and that's what I mean it kind of I didn't the director either bring a, a bigger effect showcase or more gore or just you know, more energy or just something with like do something with the camera really go all out and I don't know if this director had done anything maybe it was I guess I could look it up real quick but I mean I don't hate the film I mean the movie had a couple all right sequences where Chris made pieces killing some vampires again by burning down the bar using a bow and arrow burning them in the crypt it didn't end on a stupid downbeat note or anything I didn't Chris Maypiece and Robert Russer Grace Jones when she was out of that stupid Ronald McDonald wannabe makeup and was just her she had like no lines of dialogue and she did fine as a presence villainous presence you know her look Richard Wink W-E-N-K hmm, they don't mention him at all so this might have been his first film so maybe that's one of the issues I forgot New World Pictures released this <laughs> Richard by oh it's written by the director as well as the producer Donald P. Borchers. And yeah, before I forget, I, it is interesting how this is dealing with stripper vampires well before From Dust Till Dawn or Bordello of Blood. I mean, From Dust Till Dawn is easily the best. I would put this over Bordello of Blood because Bordello of Blood got ruined by the stupid fucking ending. I think if Bordeaux Blood didn't have that out of the blue downbeat then smell of getting killed ending, I would like to quite a bit more. So the producer who helped write this, he would go on to direct the remake of Cho the Corn from 2009. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck me. It's a 5.99 IMDb. I would give it maybe a little bit lower, but well, I mean that's a fair that's a fair rating. I want to see what this director has done. I should have looked it up before. I uh, did the. So after this, he directed a TV movie second segment of Attack of the Five Foot Two Women in 1994. Just the ticket. Apparently, this guy has written a lot of fucking movies. Huh. His name is on the strips for 16 Blocks, which I liked. The Mechanic with Jason Statham, The Expendables 2, The Equalizer, Jack Reacher Never Go Back, Equalizer 2, wow, a bunch of movies I don't fucking like. So he helped write Expendables 2, Expendables, well, not 3. I did not like The Mechanic with Jason Statham. I liked the sequel more. He didn't write the sequel. So... I like 16 blocks he wrote. So he wrote The Mechanic with Jason Statham, Expendables 2, The Equalizer films, Jab Reacher 2. And he's writing a movie that they're doing on Craven the Hunter from Spider Man? Katrina's vampire makeup is based off a of priest from Blade Runner. 
Fucking fool me. I never would have thought that. I think this is Blu-ray from... What company was it that did the Blu-ray? Arrow Video? Maybe, I mean, I'd be interested to look at the features. The making of the film. But yeah, I mean, as... Just to end it with... Like I said, do I mind the film? No. I like the two lead actors. I like some of the lighting of the film. It didn't really do anything that made me that angry or mad or pissed off. You know, the ending was fine. Grace Jones, after she got out of that stupid makeup, she was all right of her presence, but then at times it seemed like she disappeared because she's she wasn't really chasing our characters. So it was hard to see her as a foreboding force. But I compared to Friday Night because it came out around the same time. Jerry Dandridge he was consistent throughout the film whether it be when our three of our characters and one goes after evil he goes after evil ed and turns him and then oh then he appears in front of our two remaining characters then they turn there's, there's jerry dandridge again so again it's this consistent threat Sometimes Grace Jones would even almost disappear because like, okay, here's Billy Drago. And then Billy Drago got killed by like other fucking vampires. So our heroes didn't even kill Billy Drago and them that were chasing them. So I, don't, I just, there's stuff I liked about it. I mentioned that already. I just be repeating myself. I, I just do think there were some missed opportunities so at the end of the day, I think it's a time waster. I think if you made Robert Russell much more into the film, made Grace Jones a bit more of a foreboding, consistent threat, maybe give a bit more of blood or gore or effect show cases or something, bring a bit more energy. I There's potential that could have made this on par with something like Fright Night or other stuff from Del Still Dawn. As it is, I thought it was just okay. Just alright. That's just my opinion. Either way, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.